I installed a mod that completely removes grounded jumping from the game, and I'm going to try and speedrun with it. I started this run in Chapter 1 because it gives a good idea of how this challenge changes things. To move around, I can only wall jump and dash, which surprisingly doesn't hinder me that much. The challenge comes from when you try to speedrun with these restrictions. Typically, you'd be able to jump after a dash to do something called a hyper dash and gain a lot of speed. Since I can't jump, I can't hyper dash, which makes going fast quite difficult. In this room, my dash doesn't get enough height to reach the wall above me, but it is possible to grab the side of the platform I was standing on, allowing me to wall jump and get some height and distance before needing to dash. Without this skill, I'm sure this challenge would be impossible. The only real difficulty from this chapter came from getting the hang of the movement, and after beating it, I was ready to start this challenge for real. Welcome to Chapter 2. Since I'm more confident in my movement now, I'm ready to spice things up. In the top left, I've set a time limit for each chapter, and if my timer ever reaches the number below it, I lose this challenge instantly. The main gimmick of this level is the dream block, which requires a dash to pass through. Speedrunners typically jump out of these blocks to gain a lot of speed, but the mod I'm using prevents this, really hurting my ability to move quickly. Dream blocks eventually gave me another problem. Since I'm speedrunning, any room I can't figure out without jumping gets me stuck and loses a bunch of time. This happened for the first time in this room here. I needed to use a dash to reach the dream block, and needed to save that dash in order to pass through it. I couldn't wall jump because all the surrounding walls looked impossible to reach from where I was. I was helpless, and my time was running out. Yeah, I have no clue how to beat this room. Wait, can I grab onto the side? Hold on. Yes, I can! Let's go, dude! Thankfully, Madeline's hitbox is small enough so that even though it looks like she touches the spikes here, I'm able to grab the wall and jump without dying. Even though I had made it through, getting stuck had lost me a lot of time, so I was being extra careful not to die, because with movement so slow, even just a single death would be devastating. Half my time was already up, and I couldn't afford any more mistakes. I was keeping a balance between going fast and playing it safe, and I was blazing through room after room until I reached the final section of the battle and chase. When playing casually, it's by far the hardest room in the whole chapter, but by using the many shortcuts here to save time, I made quick work of it. This is a bit tricky, I have to go- No! That's really bad. I think I just lost because of that. This screen is so long, and I don't know if I'll finish in time now, because I have to redo the whole thing. I was so devastated, and worst of all, the stress had me making silly mistakes. This is not normally how I do this section. I'm messing up so much, this is so sloppy. I had escaped the difficult parts of the level, and it was just a straight shot to the end. However, the nerves were getting to me. I was making serious mistakes, crashing into walls, and moving inoptimally. As I sprinted for the end of the chapter, I had 30 seconds left. It was really now or never. The timer was going to be very close. I really was doing everything I could to optimize my movement, such as trying to avoid the springs in this room because they slow me down just a little bit. It was absurdly close, but thankfully, I reached the end just in time. Yes, this is it! Come on, come on, come on! Yes! Chapter 3 is insane, so I gave myself a lot of time to beat this level. You might think that 15 minutes is ridiculous, but with how tough this chapter is, and how close the last timer was to ending my run, I think it's justified. This level is quite the difficulty spike when playing casually, because the platforming in it is much tougher than anything we've ever seen before, and that's going to mean I die a lot. I've already stressed how time-consuming deaths are here, and I'm also nervous about the platforming being very difficult to beat without jumps. This is what I'm talking about in terms of increased difficulty with platforming. As far as I can tell, my only way up is to have my dash end in a spot that lets me grab that wall. This winds up being basically trial and error, requiring death after death until you get lucky. This one trick lost me over a minute of time, and worst of all, we have to do it again here a bit later into the chapter. Annoying tricks like this are why I gave myself such a high time limit for this chapter. This is the big mess, where I have to hit three buttons in order to continue with the level. Thankfully, this part of the chapter isn't that hard, and I had no trouble getting through it. In fact, I didn't die a single time, especially not in this room. This part of the chapter is easy, and it definitely didn't take me a whole five minutes. Alright, so maybe I died once or twice, but thankfully, the 15 minute time limit helps to lessen the blow of my deaths. Remember that trial and error trick? I sure hope I don't have to do that again! Oh no. Are you trying to navigate around a ceiling, but Madeline is just too tall? Are you always too far away to grab the wall, or too close and bump your head? Do you wish there was a better way? Well, wouldn't you know it, I've got just the thing. By inputting a downwards dash, and quickly changing the direction you hold, you can perform a demo dash. This tech allows you to dash with a crouching hitbox, letting you get around those pesky ceilings. But this screen isn't done trying to stop me yet. 
To leave, we have to scale these two walls. We need to use a dash to reach the first wall, and our normal wall jump won't reach the second wall. How do we solve this conundrum? Well, walls in this game have a maximum height you can climb up them. If you grab a wall above this height, you are pushed down to the correct height. However, if you jump before this push occurs, you can wall jump just a little higher than the game intends, which is enough height to make it to the second wall and leave the room. Holy crap, I got it. Finally, that room took forever. With that very painful room done, the rest of the chapter is a breeze, and we finish with a few minutes to spare. Before going into chapter 4, we need to talk about clouds. The height you get from them is significant, being about equal to a vertical dash. I can't get that height with this challenge, which might make platforming harder or even impossible. Despite this, all the clouds I was encountering gave me no trouble. I breezed past room after room with them, but eventually, my luck ran out. In this room, I was faced with a seemingly impossible task. The level intends us to use this cloud to bounce over the spike wall to this platform, which is impossible. Dashing vertically doesn't seem like a workable solution, and the gap under the platform is simply too great to cross. I was stuck, and with time ticking down, I frantically threw myself at the wall over and over again, hoping a solution would present itself. Was this the end? Would the time I spend here prevent me from finishing the chapter in time? I spent 30 seconds here, then a minute, then two, then... There's a mechanic called a wall boost that lets you gain a lot of height from wall jumping after a vertical dash, but it won't work if there are spikes between you and the wall, so all we have to do is get between the spikes and the wall. Conveniently, if wind pushes you into spikes, the game will only kill you once the wind stops moving you. This means that there's a small window where you're inside the spikes and up against the wall. Since you're touching the wall, there are no spikes between it and you, allowing a wall boost. I had this small victory, but I'd spent over a quarter of my time in this room alone, and I had a ton of the chapter left to beat. I knew that I'd have to play seriously well if I wanted to finish before my 8 minutes were up, so play well I did. Everything was going great, and I started to approach the last screen. I knew the timer would be close since I had a few deaths getting here, but I was very confident I'd finish on time since I had almost 40 seconds left when I entered the final screen. I had an early death in the room, but everything else was smooth sailing. Sadly, on the very last jump, I dashed in the wrong direction, so I had to do the whole screen again. Even then, I still made it out on time. It was a close call, but I had a few seconds to spare. Chapter 5, while possible, is very slow. Skipping the search for Theo is not possible without jumping, and moving with Theo in the crystal is slow and very frustrating. So instead of having you sit through my suffering, I'd like to ask for your support. This is a brand new channel, so if you would subscribe, it would help me get off the ground and ensure you don't miss any of the absolute BANGER videos I plan on posting in the future. Any support you can give is a huge motivator for me, and I really would appreciate it. Alright, back to the content. I feel like I didn't get enough pain from beating chapter 5, so I'm gonna make this challenge stupidly difficult. I'm giving myself 20 minutes to beat the chapter, however, every time I use a wall jump, a minute is removed from the time I have left. Movement without ground jumping is already very slow, but without wall jumps, I've moved vertically at a snail's pace. I have to use my first wall jump in this room. You can see it's a wall jump and not a normal one because it pushes me away from this right wall. That wall jump had just cost me a minute of time. In this room, I need to cross a ridiculously wide chasm. To make it over without a wall jump, I can use a cool property of Madeline's dash. You might think that the dash works by moving you a set distance whenever you use it. However, the dash is actually giving you a set speed for a set amount of time. This small distinction typically wouldn't matter. But what would happen if you started the dash with more speed than normal? Well, it would be silly if a dash slowed you down, so instead, the game sets that higher speed as the speed of the dash. However, this is not enough to reach the platform on its own, since once the dash ends, you quickly slow down. This can be avoided by dashing diagonally down. To allow for faster movement when speedrunning, the creators of this game decided to not slow Madeline down at the end of one of these dashes. By dashing after letting go of this Kevin block when it's about to launch you, for a moment, your horizontal speed is greater than a normal dash speed. So by dashing down right, you can keep this high horizontal speed long enough to clear the gap. 
Using the same trick, I can clear this screen without a wall jump, and I eventually got all the way to the battle and fight without subtracting any more from my timer. The difficulty of the challenge picked up a little, and I had to use a second wall jump just a few rooms into the fight so I could make it over this spike. However, things were still going great. I had over half my time left, and I was able to finish the first half of the fight having only used two wall jumps. But this is where everything fell apart. I needed a wall jump to cross this gap. Two rooms later, another to get over these spikes. The room after that, one on this moving platform to cross a spike chasm. And the room after that, one wall jump here to gain enough height to clear these spikes. But this was the last room of the battle and fight, so I figured the run would be pretty much over. Boy was I wrong. Since I died, I need another wall jump to get through the room. I made it back, took a breath, and crossed the gap that killed me last time. My 20 minutes was now down to 13, but I got powered up and started the climb. It was all vertical movement, which was made agonizingly slow because I couldn't wall jump. I climbed the first wall, and tried to transfer to the second, and fell. I resumed the climb. I had 30 seconds left. I moved up the rest of the chapter as quickly as I could, but would it be enough? Would my climb be fast enough to make it in time? Could I have shaved off more wall jumps from the chapter? No, I was so close to the end, and I had some hope left. I just needed to push through and finish the climb. I approached the end and made one final leap toward battling, but there were less than 20 seconds left. My heart was racing, and I didn't know how long this final cutscene lasted, but thankfully I reached the top. Yes, dude! I had made it, but with only 10 seconds to spare. After all my struggle, my climb was over, but I still had another greater challenge ahead of me. Chapter 7 See the title of the video? Chapter 7 is the reason for the word impossible. You can make it to 1000 meters, then 2000, and past 3000, but eventually I reached the roadblock that stops everyone else that tried this challenge, Flag 8. People have tried for years to beat this checkpoint, but none have succeeded. As far as anyone knows, there is no way to get enough height to clear the spikes before Flag 7. So after all that hard work getting here, was I gonna let it stop me? Yes. But all hope is not lost. In Celeste, every chapter has a B-side, which is a harder but shorter version of the chapter. Thankfully, due to developer oversight, beating the B-side will unlock the same things that beating the normal chapter would unlock, which in this case is the epilogue. It turns out, unlocking Chapter 7's B-side is possible without jumping, so that is where our run continues. This was it, the last hope for this challenge. I started with an hour on the clock. I knew it would be tough, but with the skills I picked up doing this challenge, this run might just barely be possible. Things got tough at the 1000 meter mark. This portion of the chapter relies on jumping out of dream blocks, which I can't do. To get around this, I had to get creative with my platforming, and do things like grab onto the side of dream blocks to wall jump. For other rooms, I had to dash in unintended directions to skip challenges that expected a jump, but this room gave me the most trouble so far. To clear it, I needed precise wall jumps to gain height while conserving my dashes, then a precise dash to make it to this dream block. Finally, I needed to line up and time a very precise wall jump off the side of these spikes in a way that lets me maintain my speed from the dream block. Things got a bit easier for a while, letting me breeze through the 1500 meter section of the chapter, but things picked up again in this 2000 meter room, which requires multiple mid-air bounces off of snowballs. However, nothing could prepare me for the challenge I had awaiting me. To beat this next room, you must gain enough height to reach Badalyn and launch to the next section. In order to get enough height, you must do a wall boost off of this block. When hitting the switch the intended way, it moves too fast for us to be able to wall jump off of. To get around this, you have to do precise movements so that you land on the cloud without hitting the switch. This lets you hit it a bit later than intended, which times the moving block perfectly. However, that movement is just the beginning. In order to actually reach Badalyn, multiple, nearly frame-perfect and pixel-perfect dashes are required so that you gain the maximum height possible. Then, a nearly frame-perfect wall boost is needed. If your dashes or wall boost were too early or too far to the right, Madeline's momentum from the wall boost sends her into the spikes. Dash too late or too far to the left, you'll either hit your head on the block or not gain enough height. I threw myself at this trick over and over again. Some 
sometimes getting just a pixel or two away from battling, but no matter how close I got, I couldn't seem to make the jump. I panicked, first using a save state so I could try the trick more frequently, then slowing down the game to more easily time the precise dashes, but it wasn't meant to be. My time ran out, and my run was over. I was devastated. I knew the trick was possible, and I'd even seen someone do it without cheats using pause buffering, but I had failed the speedrun. However, I decided that despite this, I wanted to see how far I could take this challenge. So let's keep going. To pass the last room of the 2500 meter section, you have to dash while on the moving block, maneuver to the left side of the block while it's moving, and wall jump off of it so that you get the block's momentum. Oh, and did I mention that the left side of the block is covered in spikes? The top of the spikes are exactly one pixel lower than the top of the platform, meaning you have exactly one pixel to wall jump off of. How fun! Once you make it past all that, you can start the final climb to the summit. You can get quite far before hitting another roadblock, Flag 13. This is what Flag 13 looks like with jumps. That is not happening. Even if you were to somehow make Madeline invincible, you can't get enough height to make it from one cloud to the other. The only way to beat this jump list is to somehow phase through the spike wall on the right. Remember the demo dash I told you about? Well, this is another use for it. However, no matter how close I start the dash to the spikes, it always ends too quickly, killing me. I struggled for a very long time to find a solution for this challenge, and eventually, while doing some research, I found a TAS. A TAS is a tool-assisted speedrun, which means they go frame by frame adjusting the game's inputs to get the perfect run. They had done the impossible and made it through the spike wall. How? Well, remember how dashes move you based on your speed? By performing a tech known as a hyperdash on the cloud, high speed can be transferred into the dash. There's only one problem. A hyperdash requires a jump, and as far as I know, there's no other way to gain enough speed in this area without one. Thus, after all that, our climb comes to an end. I'm not too upset though, because we got surprisingly close to the top of the mountain. It may have taken every trick up my sleeve, but we made it very far within the strict limitations of this challenge. If you want to see me do more challenges like these, I'll be live on Twitch every Saturday and Sunday at 3pm Eastern. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Thanks.